Welcome to another video guys. Hey, it's me, Chinami, and this one is for all my perfume addicts out there. I know you guys are watching me. I know I am watching you guys. I know this is a little bit of a circle where we all just live in this beautiful fragrance echo chamber where <laughs> we keep telling ourselves this is okay and we're fine. My collection is not out of hand. It's okay. But how did we get here? How did we get to this point where fragrance has become this somehow collectively huge part of our lives where we basically just kind of wound up here? I'm so glad you asked because I'm going to tell you this is the stages of perfume addiction and how they progress, okay? Like this is, most of us, this has been how it got here. This is the road thus far <laughs> for my supernatural fa fans out there, okay? Carry on my wayward son. There'll be peace when you are done. I'm sorry, I'm a supernatural f f f f f fan. And <laughs> yeah, if I was Dean Winchester, fragrances would be pie for me, basically. So here we are, okay? And yeah, let's get into it, okay, guys? So how does it start? It's, it is unsuspecting. You don't even think where you're getting into. And some people stay at this first stage, okay? Some people never progress through this to the next stage. And what is the first stage of fragrance addiction? It is, of course, Bath and Body Works, Body Mists and things like that. Kind of like low-key, is it a fragrance or is it a deodorant? You know, like, or getting a deodorant that has a smell to it, like deodorant that actually smells like something. You kind of discovering as a, probably like a preteen or something that, oh, I can smell a little bit better. You know, like I don't have to smell like shit all the time. I don't have to smell like sweat. I can smell like something else, like flowers or like, I don't know if you're a man like shower gel or, or whatever. Like that's the first stage you get like a, Slightly better deodorant, okay? Like slightly more fra fragrantic, beautiful, kind of smells like something, okay? Like that's the first stage. At this first stage of fragrance addiction, you don't know shit about notes. You have absolutely no idea. You can just like make out that, oh, it smells sweet or oh, it smells fresh. And that's all your knowledge about the subject thus far. Next stage, okay? Next stage. It's Christmas time or your birthday and you get gifted a very easy going fragrance. For me, it's wave of love, you know? <laughs> like something that's fresh, fresh and easy going and kind of like almost does not even smell like a fragrance to you. Like it's just something a little bit fresh something a little easy going, you know, something that actual freshy heads or like actual fragrance heads don't even probably think about as a like revolutionary fragrance. Like it's just there, you know, you get gifted something, something cheap, something easy, something like that. And your whole fragrance world <laughs> kind of opens up at stage two you kind of understand that there are fragrances out there that smell nice. You might even get your first compliment when wearing that fragrance. Somebody comes up to you and says, oh, you smell nice. That makes you feel good and you start to wonder, oh, could I smell even better? That's the stage two. Getting gifted fragrances, okay. We're going to the stage three, my people you've understood that you can smell better and <laughs> it makes you more popular probably and it makes you feel confident and it makes you feel nice and you're like what is out there and the first thing that you go for this is the first time you are actually going fragrance shopping this is the time when you go to your local marketplace and you look at the things that are actually there 
you know, like there are tester bottles and you're testing shit out. This is stage three. You are way getting into it, okay? <laughs> you are delving your head into this bullshit, okay? <laughs> so at this stage, you start to understand that there are billions of different fragrances. And this is also the stage where you do not understand the more complex fragrances yet. You don't have the love for them. You kind of feel like they're too much. This is usually <laughs> the phase where you go for designer fragrances. You go for these really likable fragrances that everybody likes. Crowd pleasers. This is the moment of crowd pleasers entering your life. Things that smell good to others and that pull compliments. This is the stage did I say three? I think I said three. <laughs> okay, let's say three. This is the designer phase, okay? This is the likable phase. You start to wear this shit because you kind of want to appeal to people. You want to smell nice and you want to pick out your own fragrance. This is kind of your first individualistic part of fragrance addiction coming out, you're starting to feel like, oh, I can actually, you know, like pick up something that I like and others like. At this point, you're still shy about your fragrances. When you go out, you don't want people not to like your fragrance. You want something likable. You might be at the point where you ask the shopkeeper, oh, which is the most sold fragrance here. They tell you it's Dior Sauvage. You buy it and you smell like everybody else. This is the stage three. You are kind of getting into it. You're kind of buying your own fragrances, but you're still taking baby steps. You are relying on what everybody else likes and what is popular. And you kind of shy away from more complex DNAs. So, you buy something likable. For example, Extreme Rose by Louis Varel. Very nice, very, very pretty, likable, easy, okay? So yeah, we get to stage four, okay? <laughs> now you are a little deeper. You've gone to, through the surface of fragrance addiction and you're, you maybe have a couple of fragrances already, but you're kind of like, what's out there? It's almost like you are kind of wondering, like, is there a world outside of these likable fragrances that everybody wears, okay? You're kind of starting to question things. You're kind of getting into it. And this is the <laughs> point where the actual fragrance addiction starts to happen, okay? Some people stay at this stage and they just like the designers and likable fragrances and they just sometimes buy fragrances. They might have like five fragrances, tops, and they wear them for the rest of their lives and they're completely okay with it, never surpassing to the stage four, which is stage four. This is kind of like the next step and this is where we go to the actual addiction. This is where you find Fragrantica, perfume net, places that actually tell you notes. And you start getting into the notes actually like, whoa, these things have recipes. These things have kind of things that they consist of. And you start obsessing about those. You kind of start obsessing about perfumery as an art form. You start understanding that these perfumers actually have vision and this is an art form and you start appreciating it and obsessing over it. <laughs> you start spending all your normal time of uh, at places like Fragrantica, just scouring through different kind of fragrances and different kind of DNAs and different kind of reviews. You start watching reviews on YouTube. What's cool? What do people like? What, what, what? You start collecting small <laughs> things that are interesting because of the perfumer. Doesn't even have a name in it. Oh, whatever. The perfumer mixed it in front of you. So it's cool. You kind of 
understand that it's an art form and you start getting interested in small, a little bit more niche shit, okay? This is the stage four. You are way deep into it, okay, my man? There's no going back. You have opened the door to actual perfumery, actual interesting shit. You start understanding what niche is, okay? You start understanding there's designer and there's niche and there's the whole world of niche waiting for you. At this stage, you start looking at different notes in Fragrantica and Perfumenet and everywhere and researching what you like and testing out things. Maybe you start kind of dipping your toes into Middle Easterners. Like, <laughs> that sounded so wrong. In the Middle Eastern fragrances, you start understanding that there are whole different kind of things than designer fragrances, like there's niche. And you are like, oh my god, I need to get on that. At this point, you're not buying cheap fragrances anymore that much. You're kind of getting to the middle ground of things. You're like, okay, maybe I don't want the 10 euro fragrances anymore because they smell cheap to me now because I have a palette, okay? <laughs> and you're kind of like getting into that whole, ooh, okay, there's better options here. I wanna, I wanna really get into it, okay? And that's when you enter stage five, okay? Stage five, you start collecting niche. <laughs> and this this is the problem area. Now you have 50 fragrances in your collection, maybe 100, okay? You've just kind of like gotten yourself into this shit, okay? Your collection is kind of starting to get off hand, but you're still telling yourself, yeah, but I'm making good choices, am I not? And you are buying niche, okay? So you understand this thing, there are houses that only make fragrances that are like specialized in them, unlike designers. And you start being really obsessed about all the notes and kind of all the perfumers that they use. And you're like, oh my God, this is a whole ass art form. And you start getting obsessions about certain fragrances and researching them all the time, looking at all these reviews, getting samples, a lot of samples, you know, <laughs> and then you just pull the trigger on these more expensive, more niche fragrances and you kind of don't want to go back on it. You're kind of like in the niche train. You don't like designer as much anymore because you know that niche is better <laughs> oftentimes and you are stuck in it, okay? <laughs> so you're still kind of going for these a little bit maybe general DNAs, but you're looking for niche brands that kind of have these better quality ingredients and you start understanding the differences between the kind of like good quality ingredients versus the bad quality ingredients and you start wanting better options, okay? At this point you have gotten yourself your own personalized palette. You know what you like, you know the notes you like, you know what you don't like, and it's pretty easy for you to do blind buys, because you already know. And at this point, your friends and family are starting to question, do you have a problem with this? Why do you always wear something new? Why do we not smell the same you on two days in a row? You always smell different, what's going on? They maybe see your collection and they're a little bit worried. Are you going off the rails? How's your money situation? And you're like, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm doing fine with it. I don't have a problem. <laughs> and maybe you have a full cart of fragrances just waiting and you have a list. At this stage, you have a list of things you want to get. And the list is long and it's just waiting to happen, okay? So you are in problems already. Whether you like it or not, this is starting to become a problem, okay? So at this stage, some people stay at this stage, but there is the last stage of 
this progression. And that is, wait, is it the sixth? I think it's the stage six, okay. And now we're getting full blown into the problem area. Nothing feels like anything anymore. You've smelled everything, all the notes. You've tried everything. You are so through with designer fragrances, you're not interested in them at all. You only go for niche anymore. Your bank account is saying, oh my God, please stop. Please do not buy any more shit and you don't listen. And <laughs> ah, you have a problem. Officially, you have a problem with fragrance collecting. And you are getting bored. Bored as shit. You've smelled it sometimes. You've smelled the new things. You already have that in your collection. You want something new, okay? And this is the stage where you start going for weird DNAs, okay? This is where you start going to the ultra niche, okay? This is where you start getting interested in the weirdest note combinations ever just because you want to experience them. And at this point, likable is a word that you do not have in your vocabulary anymore. Nobody thinks you're likable at this point. Now you smell weird, okay, <laughs> and you like it. This is the point where you see fragrance notes like gunpowder, blood, iodine, and you're like, oh my god, this is the next best thing. I want this. I want to know what that smells like. And somebody has an artistic vision that I want to see what it's like. And I don't even care if people think I smell like shit. I just want to have that, okay? And you start putting hundreds of euros to get these fragrances. You might even blind buy them just because you're so fucking curious about them. And at this point, like your collection is coming out of the closets. There are fragrance bottles everywhere, everywhere. It's a certified fucking problem at this point. <laughs> you have so many that everybody around you questions your sanity and they should, okay? And at this point, you are <laughs> all the time smelling like really weird concept fragrances and you kind of despise everything normal because it's not artistic enough for your tastes and your tastes have gone so far off that you can't even save yourself anymore. Okay, this is the peak of fragrance collecting. Maybe at this point you've started to double into perfumery and maybe you want to make your own fragrance. This is the point where you have gotten so far into this that you are considering it as a career. You are thinking about becoming a perfumer. And at this point, I must tell you, nobody can help you anymore. <laughs> you are so far into this shit that no one can get you out, okay? This is the peak. This is the peak addiction, okay? This is where you are like buried under all of your fragrance hobbying and we say rest in peace because nobody can save you anymore. Your obsession has reached the peak, okay? And this is where you start releasing your own fragrances and you become a master perfumer. Ta-da! Okay, and that's kind of the peak condition of this hobbying. You are now there. You just... The sky is the limit. You start making your own weird niche concoctions and we all just watch from afar and are at all. okay? That's what happens. Those are the stages of fragrance addiction. Beware. It's really easy to get too much into it, honestly. It is so easy to slip too far. And I am probably at stage four, I think. I'm a stage four fragrance addict, I think. And 
I think I still have long ways to go before I get to six, but I don't think that that's too far ahead, honestly. It might happen. It might happen at some point. Where do you land on the scale of craziness? Let me know in the comment section down below. This has been your fragrance stages video and I hope you guys like it and I see you guys in my next one. Bye!